Welcome everyone to the first live Q&A in Payroll Solutions Community for Business Owners. It is January 10th, 2020, and we're just going, just about ready. I just want to double check and make sure that we are live on Facebook. Okay, it looks like we are. All right, so today's topic is what do you need to know to complete year end? Because folks, it's that time of year again. Um, and year end isn't just about printing W-2s and doing a few extra things. If you're doing year end payroll processes correctly, you've double checked that the, re the W-2s match the payroll summary by employee for the year and that the wages match, the taxes match, everything matches. And hopefully at some point the in the third quarter, you've gone through and verified that everybody's address and contact information and everything is correct. Because you know employees move during the year and they neglect to let you know especially if they no longer work for your company. And you do get hit with some pretty heavy fines if your W-2s are not not sent to your employees on time. Um, let's see, there is... So another thing that some business owners don't realize is that the employee's name on the W-2 needs to match exactly the name that they have on their social security card. So if they've, if you've got them in the payroll system with a nickname or a, a missing a hyphen and a hyphenated last name, or if they have a hyphenated last name, just putting one or one of the two names in the payroll system can cause issues. And another thing that I have seen, I think a little bit more frequently lately, is that somebody has miskeyed the social security number from the W-4 into the payroll system, whether that's the employee, if you have a self-onboarding system, or the person that's in charge of getting the employee set up in the payroll system. Uh, let's see. The, and the next step is to verify wages, taxes, and benefits. So you wanna make sure that the PTO accrual is correct and that the correct amount of PTO has been paid out. You'll obviously want to update your worker status, whether they're still active, they're terminated, or on leave. You'll want to um, also want to make sure before you process your first payroll for 2020 that you've updated their wages. If you're if you're paying a lot of minimum wage workers. I think minimum wage in 35 or 36 states changed on January 1st. And you always want to review and make sure that you're always paying employees at least minimum wage or above. And the easiest way to find that out is to go Google your state and minimum wage. So for example, we're our office is located in Minnesota, so I would Google Minnesota minimum wage, and you'll it'll you'll want to find the one that takes you to the Department of Labor or the Revenue or Unemployment, but a an actual government website that will tell you what the minimum wage is and when it went into effect. You'll also want to update your minimum wage posters. So we have these in Minnesota and they always have the effective date. So um, we'll just, you'll wanna make sure that you'll go to your own state website and get those. Most of the time you can get them for free. You will get 
letters from people offering to sell them to you. But most of the time you can order them either as a download or a physical copy from your state website for free. And that updated posters is something that not all payroll companies are going to alert you to. So it is ultimately you as the business owner's responsibility to make sure that those that you do have the correct forms and that you are paying your people the correct amount of minimum wage. And this year, we also have a new W-4 that goes into effect for all people, all of your employees that were hired after January 1st. So it, the, the big change from the old W-4 to the new W-4 is that you don't pick exemptions. So you single zero, single five, married six, no longer an option. You're either married filing separately or single, They're, that's the same option, or married or head of household, that's it. You don't, there's no other options. And then there's a, a worksheet that you work through to figure out what your, what your exemptions would be so that you can figure and with complete with tax tables and it's a really complicated awesome web um, new form to fill out and as always your employer your HR person your payroll person cannot help you fill out the W-4 those should always be deferred to your tax preparer to help you fill those out. And if you or your if you've noticed that your employees need either get if you notice or your employees come to you and they tell you that they get a big refund or they have to pay in a lot, definitely you want to give them the new W-4 so that they can get that printed out and fill it in when they talk to their tax preparer, which as many of you know, you've got a lot, uh, if you have employees, you'll know that they're asking when are my W-2 is going to be ready and you, the, you're legally responsible to deliver the W-2s to the employees by January 31st. However, I recommend getting them to the employees as soon as you are able to work through the whole process and make sure that they are correct <coughs> and get them to them early because if they notice that there are any errors on them, you want to correct them before you have to also submit the W-2s to the Social Security Administration and your state if, if you have a state requirement because that deadline is also January 31st and filling out a corrected uh, W-2 is not a fun thing to do. So once you're sure that your W-2s are correct, then you can start working on the 940. Um, that is how you pay your federal unemployment tax and you get, um, you want to make sure that your 940 matches your W, the total wages that was paid on your W-2s. There's, all of these payroll forms are interconnected. So you'll, you know, the first step would be to fill out your 941 and make and then add those numbers all up and make sure that th that is the total that is on your payroll summary and the total gross wages is what should be on your w-2 well all of your w-2s and the cover sheet for that is the w-3 and you want to make sure that 
the W-3 and the 940 all have the same gross wages because if they don't, the IRS will catch that and kick it back and then you'll get penalties and interest and then you'll have to prove which were the correct numbers and why the numbers were not correct when, when you got them all submitted. And I'm going to take a look and see if anybody has any questions here on the Facebook group because I'm not seeing any on the Zoom here. I am not seeing any questions on there, but definitely if you need anything explained a little bit more or have questions on anything that I've said, definitely leave those in the chat and I will answer them as quickly as I can. Thank you very much for attending.